24 Liberal MPs went to, caucus, uh, to his caucus today to tell him that he's not worth the crime, cost or corruption. They wanted to tell him that he's doubled housing costs, doubled the national debt, sent two million people to the food banks, but he wouldn't let them. He silenced half of the dissidents. In fact, some were intimidated so much so that even Rosemary Barton, the Prime Minister's favourite journalist, said people don't have phones in the room and some people are going to the bathroom texting us. Ooh. Mr. Speaker, will the Prime Minister text those dissident Liberal MPs, tell them to come out of the bathroom and tell the whole world that he's not worth the cost? Yeah. Yeah. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Speaker, in our caucus, people have always been free to speak their mind and have different perspectives. What is interesting, Mr. Speaker, is nobody in the Conservative caucus seems to have spoken out uh, when one of their members uh, got an all-expenses-paid trip to an extreme anti-abortion church in uh, in Florida. Nobody spoke out when one of the members on their front bench went and dined with uh, with uh, white nationalists, uh, far-right German nationalists, and nobody uh, spoke up and is continuing to speak up when their leader refuses uh, to get a security clearance so he can deal with foreign interference. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, even Liberal MPs know now because their constituents keep telling them that the carbon tax is driving up the cost of food. They wanted to go to caucus today and tell the Prime Minister that Canadians are literally starving, some eating out of dumpsters because of the carbon tax. But he sent out his immigration minister to attack them, saying that they are, quote, garbage. What's garbage is the Prime Minister's record doubling housing costs, driving up food prices and forcing people to eat out of dumpsters. Will he stop treating his own MPs and Canadians like garbage? Yeah. Yeah. The, on the Right Honourable Prime Minister. I think uh, the leader of the Conservative Party shouldn't be bragging that none of his MPs have asked him to get a security uh, clearance so that he can actually protect his party from, uh, from foreign interference. That none of his MPs have spoken out that having one of their members uh, go down to Florida on an all-expenses-paid trip by an extreme anti-abortion church is just fine for all of their MPs. And that, quite frankly, none of them have any issue with a member on their front bench dying with a neo-Nazi. Mr. Speaker, I would hope some of his members in his caucus would speak up about some of the problems. I ask the Honourable Member from Wellington, Halton Hills, to please not speak out of turn repeatedly uh, during this question. He's an honourable and very well-respected member. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, uh, the Prime Minister, who has a lifelong record of racist outbursts, is now coming unglued on the floor of the House of Commons. The question was about the 24 Liberal MPs in his caucus that are trying to speak out against his quadrupling of the carbon tax, not because they care about the cost of living of their constituents, but because they're worried they're going to lose the election. So if he th the Prime Minister is so confident in quadrupling the carbon tax, why won't he call a carbon tax election now? Yeah. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, our price on pollution not only decreases emissions and helps fight climate change, but it grows the economy and investments, and it puts more money in the pockets of middle-class Canadians from coast to coast to coast. Indeed, Mr. Speaker, what we've seen from the Parliamentary Budget Officer is that Canada carbon rebate puts more money back in the pockets of Canadian families uh, than it costs them in the federal price on pollution. And that is exactly what the Leader of the Opposition wants to cut. He wants to cut affordability for Canadians, he wants to cut the fight against climate change. That's not how you build a strong future. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Taxes and housing costs. Now, on that subject, the Prime Minister created a $4 billion so-called housing accelerator that gave hundreds of millions of dollars to big city politicians across the country. Toronto got the money. 
and construction went down 20 percent. Winnipeg got the money, construction went down 15 percent. Vancouver got the money, construction went down 19 percent. Ottawa got the money, construction went down 10 percent. Mr. Speaker, when I was the housing minister, we built 194,000 homes. Why won't he follow my common sense example? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Opposite was Stephen Harper's failed housing minister. He built six affordable housing units across the country. So we'll take no lessons from them on housing. They would rather pick fights rather than invest in the kinds of changes that are improving density and zoning, using public lands, accelerating red tape so that people can get more affordable housing built quicker right across the country. It takes actions and investments to build up this country. That's exactly what we're doing in responsible ways. All he's offering is fights with the provinces and municipalities and cuts to services Canadians rely on. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, he just accidentally told the truth. He said he ex he's accelerating red tape. He sure is doing that, but he's not accelerating his math lessons. He's always admitted that he's been bad with numbers. I have the documents from Stats Canada's website. That's part of his government that shows that in 2015, there were 194,461,000 housing completions. And the average rent was only $973 for a one-bedroom, half of what it is today. Given that I delivered so many affordable homes, why won't the Prime Minister follow my common-sense plan to build the homes, not the bureaucracy? Hey, hey. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, it says something about the level of confidence the previous Prime Minister had in that member when Stephen Harper used to say the federal government has no responsibility around housing and then asks him to be their housing minister. Uh, that's way, perhaps why he delivered only six affordable homes over the course of their years in government. The reality is, Mr. Speaker, we have stepped up to invest in densification, in cutting red tape, in creating uh, more housing starts right across the country, working with municipalities and provinces to solve this housing crisis, while all he offers is cuts and breaks to wealthy landlords. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, it is this Liberal Prime Minister that said a year ago that the federal government has no responsibility for housing. Right. Of course he said that after he had completed the doubling of housing costs. And then, speaking of housing ministers, he went on to point the guy who had lost track of a million people coming into the country, right. who had allowed a 300 percent increase in population growth against the warnings about housing from his own department. Tomorrow the Prime Minister plans to reverse and sw follow, swallow himself whole on immigration. Will he complete the job by firing his housing minister? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, we have continued to step up and invest in housing by working with provinces and municipalities right across the country because, of course, we know that actions of previous governments of conservative and liberal stripes underinvested for many years in housing, which is why we're in the situation we're in, a situation not dissimilar to many advanced democracies around the world. That is exactly why we have stepped up to put money on the table for municipalities as they change their densification rules and zoning laws to accelerate the process of building housing and continue to solve this housing crisis that Canadians are facing from coast to coast to coast. That's right. The Prime Minister is admitting that his immigration policies have been totally incompetent. In fact, the ratio of new people to new homes reached its highest level in recorded history last year after his then immigration minister, now housing minister, ignored the warnings of his own department. According to a new Concordia University report, the rent is expected to rise to $7,500 in Vancouver and $5,500 in Toronto if the trajectory continues. Will he reverse course now? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker. One of the great uh, advantages 
of Canada in the world, of Canadians in the world, is that we continue to be a country that understands that immigration is a source of opportunity and growth and richness for this country. One of the other great advantages we have is we have an immigration system that is able to adjust to different realities. In the years after the pandemic, uh, there was a need uh, for more temporary workers, there was a desire for more international students, and we let more in, uh, working with the provinces and businesses across the country. As uh, we see the situation shift, as the labor market shifts, we're making changes to the immigration system so that we can keep its support. That's great. Right. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Speaker, there's nothing compassionate about it. Inviting people without a place for them to live or health care for them exactly. to have or jobs that exactly. provide them with paychecks. Yeah. He has destroyed our immigration system through his own personal incompetence and destroyed a 150 year common sense consensus between Liberals and Conservatives on that subject. He cannot fix what he broke on immigration, housing, or anything else because he's busy fighting his own caucus, why won't he call a carbon tax election so that we can restore Canada's promise where anyone who comes here and works hard can have a good life, a safe street and a warm home? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker. The work we are focused on is on the middle class and people working hard to join it, and we have delivered over these past years. And in these times of global strife and pressures, that is exactly what we are doubling down on, on investing in building homes, investing in strengthening our immigration system so that it can match the challenges we're in right now, in moving forward on putting more money in people's pockets, even as we create strong jobs and growth for the future. The Bank of Canada just really reduced interest rates because inflation is now down to low inflation once again. We are managing this country responsibly. We're continuing to invest in its future. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, Canada makes every single one of us a promise. That if you work hard, you get a good life. That promise, like everything else after nine years of this NDP Liberal Prime Minister, is broken. Now, he's broken countless promises, but this one is different. This wasn't his promise to break. It belonged to all of us. Now that he has destroyed the immigration, the housing market, the cost of living, will he call a carbon tax election so that we can bring home Canada's promise? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Once again, Mr. Speaker, we see the Leader of the Opposition pushing a brokenest vision of Canada that is simply not aligned with the reality. Yes, Canadians are str struggling, like people are all around the world after uh, years of high inflation and disrupted supply chains and global conflicts has weighed heavily on everyone around the world. But Canadians continue to see opportunities. Canadians continue to see investments by a government that believes in them, whether it's investing in green jobs of the future or investing in programs and supports like dental and child care that make a difference that the Conservatives continue to vote against. That's right. The Honourable Member for Burnaby South. Or do we have? Is you have any no? Is you make excuse I apologize to the Honourable Leader of the Opposition. <laughs> Mr. Speaker. Brokenest. It's not even a word. He's even breaking the English language. <laughs> My goodness. So he broke the housing market by doubling the costs. He broke the food, food, the cost of food by jacking up the carbon tax and increasing prices 36 percent faster than in the United States. He's broken our immigration system. He's breaking the bank with his doubling of the debt. Even his own caucus members think that everything is broken. Why don't we have a carbon tax election to decide? The very honourable prime minister. Well, the Leader of the Opposition is focused on exploiting the struggles of Canadians that are very real. He's not off.
offering a single solution to support them. He's offering to take away the Canada carbon rebate that is putting more money in their pockets and fighting climate change successfully while it grows the economy. He's offering to cancel the dental care program that has helped close to a million Canadians already access dental care. He's planning on cancelling the child care uh, that has brought child care costs down to $10, $10 a day in so many parts of the country and created spaces everywhere. He stands against the programs and supports for Canadians, while at the same time he says Canada's broken. That's right.